welcome to engineering hot spot on student demand we have brought a topic trusses so what are basically trusses trusses is like a structure only and uh, it has several members and the members are such that they are pin joint okay and if you ask me about the force the force in a member is always axial type means it can be compression or it can be tension the members can be in compression or it can be in tension there will not be any shear force there will not be any bending moment remember these two things will be absent only axial force can act in member and the members are pin joint pin joint means they are hinged or something like that but this is how it is we can differentiate uh, trusses from the frame in frame the members are rigidly joined they may, may be uh, with the help of uh, weld or it may be bolt and uh, the members of a frame uh, are having axial force as well as bending moment now <clears throat> we will look into the classification of trusses trusses can be of two types one it can be a 2d truss that is also called as plane truss and the second one is called the space truss so let me uh, first try the definition for truss members are subjected to axial force only maybe tensile or compressive means moment will be absent these two points you have to keep in mind while solving the problems of trusses and trusses can be of two type if you see one is called plain truss also called 2d truss and the second one is called space truss it also called as 3d trusses where you can see space truss space truss can be seen in towers if you see the any telecom towers or a transmission line towers there the structure that you can see in this way in this way that is basically a space truss and plain truss you can see in a bridge if you look into on any bridge the several members will be there in zigzag way so that is basically a plain truss it's a 2d truss basically so we, we don't have a uh, space truss in our syllabus of gate and a, or any competitive exam we will look into uh, the problems for plain truss only so okay now we will study plain trusses before going to different kinds of trusses uh, means basically plain truss uh, we will look into uh, the types of support a little recall of the types of support what you have studied in saw as well so types of support so what are the 
types of support you can see. Number one is the roller support. How it looks? Basically, it will be in this. It's represented in this way. So, remember in roller support, there will only be a vertical reaction. There will not be any horizontal reaction. Remember. Second one is hinged or also called as pin pin support. So you will find this support represented as this way. So there will be two reactions. One will be the vertical reaction and the other one will be the horizontal reaction. Remember. And the third one is fixed support. Fixed support. How it looks? It is represented in this way. Fixed. So, there will be basically a horizontal reaction there will be a vertical reaction and there will be a moment as well. The direction it will depend, you can take any direction. Uh, after solving problem you will get to know what will be the original direction. Okay. So remember there will be moment as well in case of fixed support. And fixed support is sometimes also called as built-in. Just remember this. Uh, now we will look into different truss system. Okay, so if you ask me how a truss looks like, it will be just a simply. Uh, it can be in any way. Drawing a simple diagram. It can look in this way as well. Okay. So, what are these things? These things are basically called as members, and force in these members act along x in axial direction. Means it can be compressive or it can be it can be compressive or it can be tensile as well. Okay, so you can uh, give the numbering, assign the numbers to this. Uh, suppose I am writing this as A, this as B, this is C, this is D, this is E. You can take the number, and this can be 1, this can be 2, this can be 3. This can be 4, 5, 6, 7. So, how many members you can see now? Number of members is represented by M. And in this case, how many members are there? There are 7 members. And how many joints are there? How will you calculate the joints? Just whenever two members or any number of members are uh, connected, they form joint. So this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing. They are, these are all joints. So how many joints in total? One, two, three, four, and five. So, 
joints is represented by small j. So there are total five joints. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So for different truss system, there is one relation. If m is equals to 2j minus 3, if you are able to get this uh, way or get this type, this is called perfect truss, remember. This is called perfect truss. Okay. If m is uh, greater than 2j minus 3, then you have extra members in your system. Members, number of members in your system will be extra. In that case, it's called redundant truss. Redundant truss. And if your number of members is less than 2j minus 3, that means whatever is required uh, a certain number of members it is less than that means the number of members are less than that what is required so that is basically called deficient trust deficient trust it is also called as unstable unstable trust okay If you uh, are looking for the problems of perfect truss, means when m is equal to 2j minus 3, this is in other ways also called as statically determinate system. These are basically statically determinate system. What is a statically determinate system? Basically, statically determinate system means uh, if you are having the number of unknowns and if you are having the uh, given equations for equilibrium, if the number of equations for equilibrium is greater than or equals to the number of unknown, in that case you will be able to solve the problem. Uh, using the help of equilibrium conditions or equilibrium equations. So, so those uh, systems are basically called statically determined system and perfect truss is basically a uh, system for statically determined type. If you look for the problems of redundant truss, they are basically statically indeterminate type. Statically in determinate what does this mean this means that the number of unknowns are more than the number of equations available for equilibrium remember in plane truss system you, you can apply uh, for equilibrium um, uh, equations one will be net horizontal force will be zero second will be net vertical force will be zero and net moment is also zero because you know that all the members are pin joint so you are basically having three equations for uh, equilibrium condition so the number of uh, unknowns should be less than or equals to uh, this three so if it is more than 3 then you will not be able to determine it and they will be uh, treated as a statically indeterminate system. There are certain assumptions that you need to keep in mind while solving the problems of trusses. Now we will look into the different assumptions. So what are the different assumptions? Let us have a look. All members are pin 
in joint. As I have told you in the beginning that the members are pin joint, all members are pin joint and are frictionless. And the joint are frictionless, okay? Second, members experience only axial force. Third, load if any is applied it will be always at the joint. Load is applied only at the joint. Okay. Four. Members don't have any weight or we don't uh, take the weight of the members. Members have no weight. Members are straight. Whichever member you will see, they are always straight. They are not bent or something like that. Okay. So these are the some assumptions what you can uh, see or you, you need to keep in mind while solving the problems. Before going into problem, uh, I like to provide you a little information and that is the very important information to solve the problems that is called zero force members in trust it will save you a lot of time while solving the problems typical problems so what is zero force member zero force members in trust So what does this statement say? Basically we have two theories behind this. One is for joint with two members joint with two members or joint form in the help of two members okay suppose anything like this you can draw Suppose I am giving this as um, this point as A, suppose this point as B, this point as C, this point as D, this point as E. So uh, you can see in this figure uh, this joint, joint E is being formed by two members, A E one member and D is the another member. And the rest of the joints, they are having more than two members. So, what this uh, zero force member for joint having two members said that if you have a joint that is being formed by two members and the joint is free from any support or any load, external load, 
in that case the force in both the members will be zero so this is a very important thing and you can remember it directly what will happen force in this member will be zero as well as force in a will also be zero this will happen only if only if joint is free from any support is free from any support so support should not be there like this these are supports free from any support or any external load external load joints is formed by two members so if these two conditions are satisfied then force in both the members will be zero like in this case so this is the concept for joint with two members now we will look into second case with three members let me draw a simple truss system suppose Suppose I am taking this uh, truss system. Now you can number like you can just name it A, B, C, D, and E. So you can see uh, at this joint there are three members A, D, D, E, and C, D. Similarly, at joint C. there are three members ac bc and cd so what the concept says that if you are having two members which are collinear and the third member is non collinear at a joint and the joint is free from any support or any external load in that case the force in non collinear member will be zero so what will happen force in ac will be zero as well as force in ad will also be zero when this can happen this can happen only if only if only if joint is formed by three members also joint is free from any support is free from any support or external load okay and third
टू मेंबर्स टू मेंबर्स आर कोलिनियर मींस दिस टू मेंबर्स आर अलोंग द सेम लाइन टू मेंबर्स आर कोलिनियर वाइल वाइल द थर्ड मेंबर मेंबर इज नॉन कोलिनियर थर्ड मेंबर इज नॉन कोलिनियर सो दिस थ्री कंडीशन शुड बी शुड बी सेटिस्फाइड और शुड मीट द थ्री कंडीशन देन ओनली द फोर्स इन नॉन कोलिनियर मेंबर विल गेट जीरो देन फोर्स in non linear member will be zero so this is the condition here force in ad and force in ac both will be zero so this is uh, this is getting very simple to solve the problems Because once you have determined that these are zero force members, you can you can eliminate these members also. This is not going to affect your system. So you can remove this and you can solve the problems. Okay. So now we will look into different problems. So the problems in trusses can be solved by two techniques. One is the method of joint, and the second technique will be the method of section. So I have taken one problem. that came in gate 2014 so by this problem we will get to know what is method of joint so basically method of joint is uh, we need to apply method of joint when we want to find the unknown and uh, we uh, consider all the unknown or the forces at a joint so like in this problem they have given this uh, truss system and uh, the length between this two is the 0.5 meter this length is 1 meter they have given one external force that is acting downward as 10 kilo newton so they wanted to know what will be the force transmitted in the member ab so uh, in this for this problem you can use method of joint so how will you apply the method of joint look at the uh, uh, means point or the joint b if you look at the joint b you can uh, think this as a joint having forces in this way so this will be f ab this force this force will be f bc and this will be your external load tail kilo newton okay but now what we will use we will uh, use the concept of net horizontal force in x direction is zero net uh, and net force in vertical direction as zero at this point so before that uh, we need to know this angle okay so we need to calculate this value of theta so you can find this theta with the help of these dimensions okay you can see tan theta if i write this will be 0.5 divided by 1 so if you uh, try to calculate this value you have to use get calculator for your calculations so if you try to solve this value this will be 26.56 degree 26.56 degree okay now you need to resolve the forces okay so resolve this force fbc so it will be f ab will act in this way fbc 
this will be fbc into cos theta ten kilo newton is acting downward and this will be f b c into sin theta okay now use the concept net horizontal force or is equal to zero so what are the horizontal force you can see at this point so it will be f a b you can take one direction suppose i'm taking this direction as positive and this direction as positive so this will be minus f a b minus f b c into cos theta equals to zero also you can do net force in vertical direction as zero so here it will be minus 10 Minus f b c into sine theta equals to zero because there are no other forces. Okay, so from here you need to determine the value of f b c. This will be minus ten divided by sine of theta. Theta is twenty six point five six. So this will be twenty six point five six degree. If you calculate this value, you will get twenty two point three six. Now, uh, what this minus sign indicates? See. Uh, I have taken F B C in this way, and that's why F B C sine theta is coming in this way. If F B C uh, is coming as negative, it means the direction what I have considered it is not acting in that way. It will act in the opposite way of what I have considered. So basically, F B C is not acting in this way. It will act in this way. Okay, this. Minus sign indicates just the uh, direction. Okay, so if you try to substitute the value, so this will be minus minus plus twenty two point three six into cos of twenty six point five six. Okay, is equal to zero. So if you solve this value, this value of F A B, this will come out twenty kilometer. So, so this will be the answer for this question. Twenty kilonewton will be the correct answer, and uh, it will come minus. Okay. So the direction what I have considered for F B C it will be just opposite. So it will be opposite means I have taken uh, this force F B C as a tensile nature. It it has a tensile nature means because at joint B it is pulling the joint B. But the thing what I have seen here it's coming as negative. So it is it will be compressive in nature. Because this force will be acting in this way, in this way it is try to compress or push the joint B. So in that case, the forces is compressive in nature, compressive nature. Okay, so this is the answer for this required question. We have a second technique as well. to solve the problems of truss that is called method of section there is one problem that came in gate 2015 we can solve this problem with the help of method of section first of all we need to understand what is method of section so basically we can see this this as a truss system so we can uh, 
cut this section into two parts separately such that uh, we can determine the uh, required force or the force that is required okay so it should be uh, the section what you need to cut uh, it should be such that uh, it will give you the required force and it will not generate any other unknown in the system which you don't need to uh, determine so basically uh, you need to uh, cut this uh, truss system into two parts completely with the help of a section so how will you do this see what they have asked in question, they wanted to know the force in the member SR. This is SR. And you can see there are two uh, joint um, support. Okay. This is a roller support. So first of all, we need to determine the value of these reactions. Okay. First, determine the values of reaction. Then we will uh, see what we can do. So as you can see, this has a hinged joint, so there will be uh, two reactions. I am calling this as PH and this as PV. I am uh, taking this as QB uh, because it is a roller joint, uh, it is a roller support, so we don't have any horizontal component. Okay, now. If you can see for this complete system, uh, what you can write net force in horizontal direction is zero. So if you see in this system, it will be pH and there will not be any horizontal force. So pH will be zero. Similarly, force in vertical direction is zero. So uh, this will be PV plus QV equals to 30 kilo newton. Okay. And one more thing what you can do, you can apply net moment about any point. Suppose I am taking net moment about point P as 0. You can apply this because these are just a support, hinged support. At any point, you can apply these three things. Okay. So, if you want to take about moment about P, this QV into this distance will be 3. This is anti clockwise. I am taking anti clockwise. Clockwise as positive, anti clockwise as negative. Okay. And forces in this direction as positive and in upward y direction as positive. Then what are the other forces? This 30 kilo newton it is producing clockwise couple or clockwise movement. So this will be 30 into 2 and you will not have any other forces so this will be equals to zero so if you try to solve this you will get qv as 20 20 kilo newton yes 20 kilo newton if qv is 20 kilo newton then from here you will get to know that pv will be 30 minus 20 that is 10 kilo newton so you have determined all the values of reactions. Now you need to uh, choose a section in such a way that it will cut uh, the trusses separately two part, in two parts and you will be having a less number of members. Uh, the truss having less number of members you need to analyze in this way. So if you cut the section in this way, what will happen? This portion gets separated and this portion will get separated. 
let us see what will happen if we are doing in this way it will lead to a system This is QV. This will be, since I have cut this portion, this will generate a force FSR. This will be your FST. This will be your FUT. Okay, and no other forces. Okay, so we need to. Name the joints. This is R. This is Q, and this is E. And uh, we know the dimensions also. This is one. This is one. Okay. Now uh, it's very important to uh, get to know at what point you will apply the uh, moment of or, or the concepts of equilibrium. So if you look at this point T, if you apply the take or take the moment at this point T, you will easily get to uh, get the value of FSR. Because why I am using a net moment at T, the reason is that if you take net moment at T as, uh, as 0, uh, then this unknown force FST, then unknown force FUT, will pass to this point T and you don't have to consider this unknown in your system uh, while taking moment. So only unknown in that case left will be FSR. So it's always better, it will be better if you take moment about this point T as 0. So what you can do? If you take moment about this point T as 0, you need to take this force FSR into account. This FSR is creating uh, clockwise, uh, anti clockwise, sorry, anti clockwise couple, into its distance will be 1. Plus, the other force is FQV, and its distance is 1, and it is producing. And it is also producing anti-clockwise couple. Yes, it's producing anti-clockwise couple. So you need to take this value as minus and uh, no other forces. So this will be zero. So if you solve this, you will get FSR as minus QB. Okay. And you know the value of QV as 20. So this will be minus 20 kilo Newton. So FSR is minus 20 kilo Newton. Okay. What does this mean? I have taken FSR as tensile. Why it's tensile? Because it's pulling this joint. So it's coming as negative. Means the direction what I have considered is wrong. You need to take this the opposite direction. So, FSR will be in this direction. So, it is trying, it, it will try to uh, push this uh, joint or try to compress this joint R. So, the nature will be compressive. Compressive nature. So, just you need to uh, calculate the value of force for this. Answer will be 20 kN. If you feel any doubt, uh, then please mention in the comment box. This method is very important to solve the several numerical problems in, for all the competitive exams. So, if you feel any doubt, please ask in the comment section. I have a problem for you. Uh, this problem was asked in date 2003. 
So they have given the truss system and they have given the uniformly distributed load of P um, Newton per unit length. Okay. So they wanted to know the force in the member CD. Force in this member basically. So how will you calculate? See, there are there can be several ways to solve the problems of truss. You can choose any method, but you should choose in such a way that it will consume less time. Okay. So what I am doing first, I need to calculate the reactions value of reactions at the support. See, this is a roller support, so you will be having only vertical reaction. I am calling this as. Uh, AB suppose okay. this is a hinged joint a hinge support so it will be it will have two components PB and BH ok now if you look into this system uh, I am taking these directions as positive Clockwise is positive, anti-clockwise is negative. So, if you look into this complete system, you will get to know AV plus PV minus this will act downward. So, this will be P is per unit length. So, if you take for this entire um, portion, it will be P into L. Okay. This will be equals to the what I have done, I have taken net force in vertical direction at 0. I have used this concept. So, this will be AV plus BV equals to PL. Okay. And net force in horizontal direction at 0. You can use this concept because this is a truss system. No, and it is a static system, no net uh, force in vertical direction and no need force in horizontal direction. So, BH, there are no other forces in horizontal direction, so BH will be 0. Now, you need to, uh, you can take the moment, okay. Moment about any point, um, suppose I am taking this moment value at B to be 0. So, it will be a B into this length L into L this length will also be L this is 90 degree this is L this will be L only so this will be 3L and it is in clockwise direction ok and you need to take these values also. So it will be W into L downward. So it will create uh, clockwise, sorry, anti clockwise, anti clockwise couple. So this will be P into L. And what will be resistance? It will be this thing will act at L by 2. So this will be L, this will be L. L by 2, this will be L. So, this will be L plus L by 2. Okay. This thing will be 0. So, now try to solve this. AB into L. This will be P into L into 3L by 2 equals to 0. If you try to solve this, this will be AB as P into L by 2 you will get. Is uh, like if AV is PL by 2 then BV will be PL by 2. So now you have determined the values of uh, rear support reactions. Now what you need to determine you need to calculate the value of force in the member CD in this member. So, 
you cannot use method of section because if you take um, if you cut the member in this way and uh, then if you try to take moment at this point or any or this point you will not get the uh, value of cd because cd will always be passing through this point a and or it may be c so you cannot use the method of section it is better to use the method of joint so what you do first you take the joint a at the joint a if you see you will be having force fac and force fa force fac and force fae and this will be your ab okay so now do net force in horizontal direction as zero so this will be fae into cos of theta plus fac equals to zero similarly summation of f v is equals to zero so this will be f a e into sin theta plus a v equals to zero so from here we will get the value of f a e as minus a v divided by sin theta what will the value of sin theta this is l this is l this is 90 degree so this will be for 45 degree okay so this value will be minus pl by 2 into sin of 45 degree now you know that fac is equals to minus f a e into cos theta now substitute the value of f a f a e here it will be minus minus plus so this will be your p l by 2 into sine of 45 into this cos of 45 so this will be your p l by 2 into cot of 45 and what is the value of cot of 45 1 only if you remember trigonometry so this will be pl by 2 so the value of fac is now pl by 2 and the value and the direction is correct because it's coming to be positive so what i have considered this as tensile is correct now uh, what you do you uh, take the support or uh, sorry joint c now take joint c you are having force in this way but uh, but if you uh, recall the concept what i have told you just before important information i have told you that uh, if you are having two uh, two collinear members and the joint is formed by three members such that two are collinear and the one is non-collinear and the joint is free from any support or any external load in that case the force in non-collinear member will be zero so from here what you can directly say if EC is zero so no need to take this no need this is your C point, this is your FAC and this will be your FCD. So what you can write here that FAC is FCD only. And uh, uh, what is the value of FAC you have got? FAC at this point is in this direction. So at this point it will be in this direction so what i have considered this as fac this is the correct way 
So F A C we have determined the value of F A C that is P L by 2. So okay, yes, it's correct. At C point F C D will be tensile nature. It will try to pull this joint C. So tensile nature. So joint C will be pulled by force F C D and its value will be P L by 2. If you look at the option, option A will match the uh, option or the answer. So if you feel any doubt, please mention in the comment box. Um, these things are very important just like we are using method of joint and method of section to solve the problems. Here we have used a method of joint. It, you can use any method. It, it depends on you and uh, you need to be very cautious to use the pro uh, right uh, technique in right problem. So uh, if you still have any doubt, please mention in the comment box. There can be several problems related to trusses. If you are, if you are not able to solve any problem, please uh, post that problem in our FB page. I will <coughs> provide the link of our FB page where you can post your or uh, uh, your post your query or your question in our FB page. We will provide the detailed solution of your question uh, if you are if you have any doubt. So till then, thank you friends and have a nice day.